Dala. So, welcome to my channel. Today we are. This is another episode of uh, African spirituality, and uh, this uh, topic was uh, came up from different discussion I had with um, Hoodoo practitioners and people from the diaspora and from Louisiana. If you've watched a couple of my videos, you know that I do have a um, special relationship with Louisiana. I'll uh, link up my Louisiana videos so you can check that out. And uh, for the new subscribers, just want to say hello, welcome, dala, 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 which means welcome. Um, just introducing myself, I am from the Bimilika tribe and I am uh, making this video, uh, this video sharing basically my own personal experiences and as well as other experiences that I have learned and seen and things I've come across uh, throughout the years uh, from my own uh, homeland, Cameroon, as well as different places where I've traveled to and lived to. So um, just to also pinpoint, uh, the Bemeleke tribe is a really vast tribe. Um, there are many within that tribe. Different villages have different customs, different um, and different villages do also have different languages, uh, different traditions. Within the same villages, each family may have their diff own different traditions. So, I'm in no way, shape, or form representing the entire Bamiliki tribe. I'm just representing, you know, the tradition that was passed on to me and the thing that I've added on to it throughout the years. Okay, so this being said, this topic, as you've seen in the title, is about um, red uh, dirt and red dust and how it is often used in um, hoodoo in Louisiana. Um, and so as you will see in the different images, uh, um, there's many different ways that people use it. They ground it and use it for protection uh, predominantly. Uh, and so you can buy it already ground, ground uh, red dirt, red soil, um, or other people will make it themselves, making it by, for example, uh, using either uh, red soil or red dirt when they can find it. There are different places in Louisiana where uh, the soil is actually red and people would use that directly. Uh, people will also, if they cannot uh, have or find uh, red soil handy, they will actually go and find bricks that are made from red soil and kind of break those, uh, break those bricks apart and use that dirt or that dust um, for their workings or for whatever they are intending to do. Uh, most traditionally, uh, the only thing that I will say about that is that you have to be cautious about, you know, where the bricks are coming from, who used them, uh, which houses are, are they coming from, what happened to those houses, because those bricks may have some uh, energies uh, based on who was living there and event that happened there. So you just have to take that in consideration. And once in a powder form, people can buy that online nowadays uh, or it goes to your practitioner all over the place. Uh, and usually, as I said, the most... Uh, popular use for that is for protection. Uh, oftentimes people will put that in their entryways, either during the door and the entrances, the windows and stuff like that to prevent certain energies from coming in. Um, so it does have that value of protection. Now we'll go into a bit more now that we've talked about the diaspora. I'm going to take you all the way to Cameroon. This is kind of the, bur the purpose of this video. So the first picture that you can see is basically in a, a small town, not uh, the capital, but you can see already on the ground that despite the fact that you have a, a road with a cemented road, um, you not cemented, but um, I don't remember the, the proper term for that, but uh, you can still see that there is some reddishness about that. You can still see that the, the, the soil itself is uh, through the dust and through the actual soil underneath the road is permeating coming through. And this is a small, um, a small town, not even like a big city. Um, and we are going to move away from the cities because the cities most of the time don't have that red soil that I'm talking about. When, but when you start taking country roads, you immediately, especially when you're going to the west of Cameroon, where I'm from, um, the road, most of the roads are uh, going to be, get reddish and redder as you go in. And um, even though there are some part, a lot of parts with the black soil, which uh, that's going to be the topic of a different video, uh, as you move inside the country, they can have many problems. A lot of times there's not even like a proper road. So uh, 
the, the pathway, pathways are being made for cars and stuff like that so you can lead to accidents and you can see that villages and towns are being built um, using that kind of uh, um, uh, soil and, 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 and dirt as a road and so it permeates you can often see people wearing their clothes and having their clothes uh, dyed in red because of that that ground because of the red soil um, I even remember my mother telling me that um, when um, back in the days when she was dating my dad uh, not dating but when they were engaged sorry um, he used to wear white pants and she used to tell me that it was really hard to get them as white ones that red dirt um, had um, set on them the other thing is it's like the redness um, of the dirt uh, there are some chemicals of course the, if you look at the different uh, geological um, uh, categories of soil red soil is well known to have a lot of iron in it um, there are different categories of red soil and the one I'm talking about not only has virtue um, for protection but it's also very fertile so in this picture you can see clearly that this person is having um, his entire um, uh, his entire pr production or food production uh, on the red soil. So it's a soil that's very, very fertile. Um, and I I'll spare you the story, some of the stories I can then for later. And then the story brings you to the villages where people actually live. So just think about the tradition of a hoodoo and how people are using that for protection and using it in an entrance doorway. And here uh, in Cameroon, you have actually people walking on red soil. Um, and if you see in the background, there are houses are made with red soil. So uh, it just gives you a little idea of... Um, if you are thinking protection, what type of protection is present or what type of energy is already present there. And so basically this is surrounding everybody. Uh, it's, feed, it's feeding the people, it's feeding the town, the, town, the people are using the, the soil and to, in order to make their home. So they are really uh, being living in a harmony with nature. So they're making their houses based with material found in their own environment. The bricks are made with, um, with uh, red uh, soil. And um, there are, uh, so you can see this person is like laying the bricks and bricks are used to do traditional uh, housing as you've seen in the past um, pictures. But they also can be used to do a little bit more of a modern uh, style home, um, uh, just like in the picture, or even um, home that are, are um, that look like more of a European style, if we, if we may say, that's a little bit more elaborate. So it may stand out because of the structure, but it is still in harmony with nature because it is based with the, the local material and with the brick. And we can see that they add a little bit of cement because it is, you know, a two... Um, a two to a duplex our home <laughs> the the word is escaping me now um and so people are actually using the environment and work and living in harmony with the environment and besides just being very fertile and feeding people there's something about the dirt and how do you know that there's something about the dirt just by looking at nature and one of the particularities that you can observe and this is a, a phenomenon that is well seen in kenya is that the elephant themselves will seek out this red dirt um, and this red mud and will come and literally literally bathe themselves in that so the fertility of the ground definitely has some virtue in terms of the red clay in terms of you know having that on your skin pulling toxins and, and, and things of that, of that nature and the elephant pretty much know that and you can see that um People who live close to nature observe nature and learn from it and, and, and pull for the wisdom that they can take from it. And I think this is why you may see people using that red dirt in many kind of ways. And I will dive into some of those ways. Uh, one of those ways is to use it on your skin, just like the elephants the elephants were doing in the past picture, and on your hair. And you guys, if you've been listening to some of my videos, you know that I am uh, really much... Um, uh, very much an advocate for natural hair and the care for ourselves and the valorization of that type of hair of our type of hair and so um there are two those are the two uh 
to one of the former ways that they use it on their skin and on their hair. And I'm taking the time to show you a lot of different pictures because um, those are two main tribes, uh, not three tribes that I've used. The first one is um, the Maasai, but I also used, I also wanted to showcase a tribe called the Amar. And the Amar are a large tribe uh, located in Ethiopia. And it was very important for me to put you a whole bunch of pictures so you can actually look at these Ethiopian women and men, which are not that much represented. Usually if you think about Ethiopia or if you look about things that represent Ethiopia, we never see those uh, tribe of darker uh, people. And so I, I found that because the way the one you do in this, it was a, that was a great opportunity for me to showcase this tribe. And really, you will see how intricate, intric, uh, intricate the um, hairstyles are um, and the texture. And then the other tribe is a, a tribe from Namibia, uh, the Him. Um, let me see. Make, let me make sure that I get this the name uh, correct uh, correctly. Just give me one second. Uh, so from Namibia, it's the Imba, the Himba um, uh, tribe located in, in Namibia. You can find sometimes tribe, um, one tribe member located in different places. And you will see how intricate their hairstyle is, um, where they use that mud, they, they mix it with fat and other things to be able to uh, make it stick to their hair uh, and there. But they use it first for the hair and the skin, and both tribes do use it for both the hair and the skin and you can see them they have that, that reddish tone to them uh, to their body as you can see that the um, the the red dirt is on it and then you can kind of see a few images on the process and how they're putting that in the hair and getting that and it's not just the women it's also the men so both of them men and sorry both men and women do use that that way and um and so you can see that it is part of the way the way of life of people. This is not something that you will do just because you feel like doing it or just because you think it's cool or it's trendy or something like that. It is uh, part of the tradition. It is part of the way of life. It is. It has. It symbolizes many things. It can symbolize uh, how many. Uh, your social status, whether you're married or not, uh, your hairstyle is part of that. Um, and the um, use of red d d soil or red dirt is simply because it is abundant in their environment. So you will see that, for example, for us in Cameroon, even though in my village we have a lot of red dirt, we don't use it for our own hair. Um, and I've tried to even remember way back... Um, uh, way back when I was little to start thinking about you know have I seen people or things like that but I don't recall and in my own uh, lineage there we, we haven't made such uses however I wanted to showcase few travel that I still do and that have um, and I think it is also because there is a different way of using what's in your own environment um, and so this is why also sometimes when people say, you know, they feel disconnected, especially people from the uh, American American diaspora or the North American diaspora who say that they feel disconnected. I say, you know, nothing is ever lost. Um, uh, just for me to go back to Louisiana and to see that they were how a certain practitioner are holding red uh, dirt or red, uh, red dust. Uh, to me, it immediately brought me home. It immediately uh, highlighted for me the connection between um, uh, the diaspora and home because the, 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 there was the same kind of uh, vision about the soil and the dirt, the red dirt, and that sanctity. I seen the practitioner how they um, um, were connected enough to recognize the power and the virtue of that soil and to use it in, in their practice. Um, and to see for those who, who actually brought the knowledge to the Americas to hold on to their knowledge and recognize that they were kind of um, brought to a similar environment because Louisiana does have some uh, red soil, as you will see later in many countries. Now, um, using for hair and skin is one of the ways that's being used. There are many other ways. Not only is obviously being used to make statues, uh, to uh, create um, a different type of art. It can be mask. It can be, you know, a lot of it is going to end up being pottery just because of the clay. It can be uh, used that way. And those are things that are still present today. You can still go and find potteries in different African countries that are made with red clay and red soil and sometimes you know go if you've 
if you are adventurous enough, um, step away from the big cities and the capital and go to different to smaller villages where you will find things that are made in a much more traditional way. And that will bring you a lot more history if you want to bring that as souvenirs and things of that nature. Um, and uh, when you look at that, it's really like, the clay is being used in all facets of life because when you think about just the pottery, something that you're going to use to eat, you're going to, something you're going to use to uh, pour in water. So you're going to pretty much use it every day in addition to having it on your hair or on your body. And for the pottery, one of the most modern things that you may uh, uh, link it to is um, seeing the um, plant pot that you can buy at you know any home store um, uh, nowadays. But taking back the road and saying, you know, um, when you head back to Cameroon and you look at the road, the soil is really red. The soil and, and just the idea of that being blessed and being protected um, can evoke and have a lot of symbolism instead of a wa walking on the pathway that is red, walking on a pathway where you feel uh, connected to nature and that you feel protected by nature and just when I was having the reflection about this and discussing this with other people uh, it just came to mind that um, in the modern day in the modern world um, when we think about a lot of people will look at red dirt and be uh, and, and dismiss it or see it as something that um, you know villagers will um, will enjoy something like that uh, but I find the, the, the symbolism with the red carpet you know it, it, I think it's interesting to say that that's red carpet is that this special pathway reserved for VIP for people who are special well, to me, it ties into, you know, trying to merge that too with the walking on a red soil and having that red soil, having a special pathway for special people, except that in certain places, everyone gets to walk on them or, or the people in that environment are basically pretty much um, VIPs, if I, if I may say. So that was an interesting reflection to have. Um, and I just wanted to leave you lastly with um, two other things. Is that red dirt is present a lot of places. Louisiana, uh, I've seen pictures from Jamaica. I've seen also beautiful pictures from all over the world, including Madagascar, of course, another part of Africa. And I've already shown you a lot of pictures from you know Cameroon and, and, and other part of Africa, Kenya and all those places. But you can also find it in Australia. You can also find it in, um, uh, what was the place? In Sri Lanka uh, uh, and in Asia, predominantly in India and China. And you pretty much go see that whenever you go to places where you have red dirt and you see the indigenous people, people are really close to their uh, original tradition or a tradition that's been passed down, you will see that that soil is being seen in a different kind of way. It's not being seen as just soil or just something that's mundane. Um, most of these um, indigenous pop uh, populations see in the soil uh, some form of virtue and, and, and see that it can bring things to you and see it as something that's sacred and that's oftentimes used for spiritual purposes as well. So whether you use uh, red dirt or that you were interested in knowing more about it, I hope that this little segment uh, provided you with a little bit more of information on that and that you can always do this simple exercise of trying to tie back and see, you know, what tradition you are uh, using and trying to figure out, you know, where is it coming from? Is it tied to anything else uh, currently being done all over the world? Um, are there any details or similarities that can be found someplace else that may be useful for you uh, as you uh, go on in practicing or learning more? So I hope you enjoyed this segment and of course I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Sala la 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 la